This video is on uh, ship's load lines and the effect of density on the ship's draft and displacement. Uh, in this regard, I'll be using four different kind of questions as an example to show you how to solve questions of ship stability in this area and also to show you the effect of the density on the draft and displacements uh, with the, the example of load lines used in some of these questions. All right, so let's start with the first question. The first question states that uh, a vessel of freshwater allowance, which is FWA, 200 millimeters, goes from water of relative density, that's RD, 1.018 to water of relative density 1.006 and we have to find the change in the draft of the ship and state whether the vessel will rise or sink. Now uh, this is video 4 in my series of stability numericals so or video 5 rather I have previously made four videos on ship stability so I advise you to watch those videos first because uh, then uh, you will understand a lot of these terms that I am discussing in this question. But just for uh, the people who are watching this video for the first time or this is the first video you are watching, I will still explain the uh, meaning of the terms as we go along. Alright, so one key thing you have to remember in ship stability questions is whenever you read a question, make sure that you understand of each of the terms that are being used in the question and uh, write down the formula for calculation and once you break it up like that you will be able to solve any question in stability so for me i must understand the meaning of each of the word that has been used in this question all right and that is the approach i will take in each question and that will clarify my concepts of stability or ship stability and the formulas used and then i'll also be able to solve the question so the first question there are some terms that i should be very clear of the first one is of course freshwater allowance. I'll talk about freshwater allowance but before I do that I will talk about relative density or RD. So relative density or the, uh, the definition of relative density of substance is that it is the number of times the substance is heavier than fresh water. So it's a ratio. It's a ratio of density of a substance compared to its density of fresh water. All right. Then we have freshwater allowance. Freshwater allowance or FWA as given in the question is the increase in draft when a ship goes from seawater to freshwater or the decrease in draft when a ship goes from freshwater to seawater. That's vice versa. All right, so freshwater, so FWA is fresh water allowance. And this refers to the increase in draft when the density of the ship goes down. So density of fresh seawater is 1.025 and density of fresh water is 1.000. So when the density goes down, the draft increases. And when the density increases, the draft decreases. That's what vice versa means. All right, so fresh water allowance of a ship usually increases as draft increases. This is because the displacement depends on the underwater volume whereas the TPC depends on water plane area. So let me show you what I mean here. So freshwater allowance is calculated by dividing the displacement denoted by W. Displacement is the mass of water displaced by a ship by, the, by 40 TPC, 40 times TPC. TPC is nothing but tons per centimeter immersion in seawater. So therefore freshwater allowance of a ship will usually increase as the draft will increase because uh, the displacement depends on the underwater volume whereas the TPC depends on the water plane area. So when we say TPC depends on the water plane area because TPC is equal to TPC is calculated by dividing area water plane area by 100 by density of water. Alright, so anyhow, you don't get confused. Let's go it go in stages. Alright. So the freshwater allowance calculated by the foregoing formula for the summer load condition is called the freshwater allowance of the ship. 
right the freshwater allowance is mentioned in the load line certificate and is considered constant for those load lines marked on the ship side such as the tropical load line summer load line winter load line and when a ship is loading down to her marks in fresh water she can immerse her load line by the fresh water allowance of the ship so that when she goes to sea water from fresh water she will rise to the appropriate load line all right let's 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 keep going and i'll tell you what load lines are as well then we have something called the dock water allowance or dwa so this stands for dock water allowance the dock water allowance is the increase in draft when a ship goes from salt water sw to dock water dw and vice versa where the dock water is neither fresh or salt that is relative density is between 1 to 1.025 so understand the difference between fresh water and dock water fresh water allowance is the increase in draft when a ship goes from sea water to fresh water or the decrease in draft when goes from fresh water to sea water it only explores the relationship between sea water and fresh water whereas dock water explores the relationship between salt water and any other water which is called dock water which is neither fresh or salt therefore drop dock water allowance is calculated as the change of draft by the formula change of relative density divided by 1.025 minus 1000 multiplied by fresh water allowance or the change of draft for example if the what is if the ship is uh, going from a water of 1.018 relative density to 1.016 then you will divide it by so you will subtract the 2 divided by 0 0.025 0 0.025 comes from here multiplied by 200 so this is the question we are trying to solve now so basically the question says that a vessel of fresh water allowance 200 millimeter goes from water of relative density 1.018 to relative density 1.0006 find the change in the draft and state whether the vessel will rise or sink so that's why because the dock water allowance explores the relationship between the water of different densities other than fresh water and salt water we'll find the change in the draft by using the dock water formula so the vessel was going from 1.018 to 1.006 divided by 0 0.25 fresh water allowance is given to us given to us in the question and then the change of draft is 96 millimeter now since the density has decreased from 1.018 to 1.006 so what density decreases draft will increase therefore the vessel will sink by 96 millimeters so remember there is a inverse relationship between density and draft so density increases draft decreases and density decreases draft increases that's why whenever you see that a vessel has gone from higher density to lower density you will know that the draft will now increase so vessel will definitely sink let's go to question number two and here you will understand the concepts of the load lines as well as so I've been talking about load lines, assuming that you know about load lines, but let me explain to you what load lines is. All right. So question number two. All right. It says a vessel is in salt water or sea water with her summer load line 60 millimeters above the water on the port side and 10 millimeters above the water on the starboard side. So remember the vessel is in sea water. So always highlight the key points that are, that are given into you in the question. And it's her summer load line and uh, the vessel is 60 millimeters above the water above the water on the port side and 10 millimeters above the water on the starboard side what you have to find is the dead weight available if a tpc is 40 so tpc is given to you all right so let's again like i said before any question that you read in ship stability you must understand the word the meaning of each and every word if you don't understand the meaning of each and every word and how you will interpret it then you cannot solve the question once you do that the question becomes very easy because it's then only a matter of putting the values in the formula and finding out so what are load lines load lines uh, are markings on the ship side up to which a ship can load based on the water it is in all right so uh, this is so the load lines are marked on both the port side and the starboard side and i've drawn you the load lines here just for an example so the port side load lines look like this 
so you can see if you are looking at the port side of the ship uh, you can see this is called the deck line all right this is a deck line this is just below the deck of the ship mark deck of the ship it's about 300 millimeters in length and 25 millimeters in thickness as you can see and then below the deck line you can see the plimsoll mark is this is the plimsoll mark so the plimsoll mark is uh, denoted by the registry of the ship in this case it's lloyd register so this is register so under which registry is the ship so this is the registry of the ship so this is lloyd register so they are like insurers lr stands for lloyd registers it could be indian registers as ir or bureau's registers bv and the dimensions of the plimsoll mark is given to you as well now the top mark of the plimsoll mark coincides with the summer load line of the ship s stands for summer load line of the ship all right and the distance between that the marks is you can see is 540 millimeters so from here to here is 540 millimeters all right then uh, right above the summer load line is the tropical load line that's t so this is tropical below the summer load line is winter winter load line which is denoted by w now remember the distance between the tropical and summer and the summer and the winter below is about 148th of the summer draft then above the tropical you have the f load line which is the freshwater load line and above the fresh you have the tropical freshwater all right so uh, these load lines and dimensions and the markings of it is marked already so this is looking at it from a port side load line so if you ever have to draw the load line in your exam you can draw it always remember the port side load line the higher number of markings such as t sw they are always facing the forward part so whether it's port or starboard then the starboard side load lines look like this and again in this case i have taken a different example of a lawyer's uh, of a registry here i have put bv which stands for bureau's veritas that's another start of another type of registry and then the dimensions and everything is remaining the same so i didn't repeat all that the deck load line is there so the, the distance between the deck load line and the plimsoll mark middle of the plimsoll mark is the free board of the ship so this is pretty much what the load lines look like these are basically markings on both sides of the ship and uh, based on the area so a, a, a whole world is divided into water zones of tropical summer winter so if you see the marking below winter is wna that stands for winter north atlantic it's only provided in specific type of ships so if you if you uh, look at these load lines they are marked on both sides of the ship and because the world is divided into uh, these uh, water zones of tropical summer winter tropical fresh and fresh if a ship is in that particular water zone in the world the ship can only immerse her load line up to that particular mark so if you are in the summer zone you can only load uh, load the ship up to the summer load line if in tropical then tropical load line so of course there's a chart available a chart which tells you which uh, the part of the world which is uh, how the world is divided into the different zones all right and that's normally pasted in the ship's office uh, above the loadicator or where the ship officer is uh, conducting the load line loading in the ship all right and this is the starboard side load lines so what you have to remember these are the load lines and the dock water and you, what you have to find is the dead weight the dead weight of a ship is the total mass of cargo fuel or fresh water that can be loaded on a ship at present to bring her summer load line to the water surface in salt water all right so dwt stands for the dead weight dead weight is nothing but the mass of cargo fuel fresh water anything else that can be loaded on a ship at present to bring her summer load line to the water surface in salt water therefore dead weight available so dead weight available is equal to the load displacement minus whatever is the present displacement so load displacement refers to the displacement of the ship up to the summer load line and uh, minus that is the present displacement it will give you the total mass of cargo that you can load tpc like i told you before is tons per centimeter it is refers to the number of tons required to cause the ship to sink or rise by one centimeter so tpc is calculated by dividing the area 
or this is the water plane area rather by 100 multiplied by density of water displaced all right so this is tpc now the vessel if you go back to the question and if you have forgotten the question here the question says that the vessel is already in sea water with a summer load line 60 millimeters above the water on the port side and 10 millimeters above the water on the starboard side you have to find the dead weight available if a tpc is 40 so tpc is given to you and uh, the load lines so basically remember so on the port side if i can change the color of my pen here i can show you what i mean so on the port side the ship so it's 60 millimeters above the water so summer load line is 60 millimeters above the water line so on the port side if this is the water level this distance here is 60 millimeters above the water line all right and on the starboard side you are 10 millimeter above the water line so the summer load line is 10 millimeters above the water line this is 10 millimeters all right so the summer load line is above the water in both the cases so we come back to the vessel in question here and i'll change my pen to red so naturally if the port side load line is more above the water that means the vessel is listed to starboard side it's not on even keel because if it was on even keel the summer load lines on either both sides of the ship would be at equal distance above the water level so if the port load line is more above the water that means the starboard side of the ship is listed all right ship is leaning to the starboard side the right side all right so since on both port and starboard sides it is the summer load line above water the mean distance of the summer load line from water will be half of the sum of the distances so that means when the vessel will be on even keel or even keel when the vessel is upright the mean distance of the load line above the water will be found by 60 plus 10 so this is 60 millimeters plus 10 millimeters divided by 2 which is 35 millimeters hence when the ship is upright the load line or the summer load line rather the summer load line will be 35 by 10 which is equal to 3.5 centimeters so here i'm just converting millimeters to centimeters above water so dead weight available that is the weight of the cargo that you can actually load to bring the summer ship to the summer load line so since you are 3.5 centimeters above the summer load line you have to you have that allowance so you need to sink the vessel by 3.5 centimeters so therefore sinkage so if uh, tpc is the tons per centimeter for one centimeter of immersion so per centimeter you can just multiply by the tpc so tpc is the weight of cargo or the weight or the weight and that will if you put on the ship it will sink or rise the ship by or i mean if you discharge and all put so if you load the ship by the tpc amount the ship will sink by one centimeter right so if the TPC is given to you and you need to sink the vessel by 3.5 centimeters, you will just multiply 3.5 by 40 and that's 140 tons. So that means if you load this 140 tons, the vessel will sink by 3.5 centimeters to the summer load line. Because right now your vessel can load up to summer load line, but it's not loaded up to summer load line. You are still 3.5 centimeters. Summer load line is still 3.5 centimeters above the water level. So if you put 140 tons, the water level or the summer load line will reach the water level and that's the maximum loading that the ship can engage in all right let's go into a third example this is question number three so in this third example again this says that the vessel is in sea water with her port summer load line this time 80 millimeters below water and her starboard load line is 200 millimeters above the water so again it's the summer load line that's a reference load line in one this time it is on the port side it is below water that means it's submerged and her starboard side it is 200 meters above water level again you have to find the dead weight if the tpc is given to you as 30 tpc is nothing again but the tons that you can load on the ship if you need to sink or discharge from the ship if you need to make it rise by one centimeter so if you can calculate how many centimeters above or below the water level you are um, from the required load line you can just discharge or load that much amount of weight equal to tpc that will rise or sink the vessel by a centimeter all right so in this case of course again if you use the concept that i used in my previous question in the previous question you know that if the port summer load line is below the water and the starboard is above the water that means 
the starboard the vessel must be listed to the port side because the vessel is listed to the port side the port side load line is submerged all right the port side load line is below but the starboard side load line is above by 200 millimeters all right so that is definitely it's not even key the shape is listed on the port side like i showed you before so if i if i go back to the same example port sword port. so if i show you again just in case if you can't visualize it i will delete the previous example here and here as well so in this time here the the summer load line is submerged so the water level is above the summer load line by 80 centimeters you get my point but the starboard side load line the summer load line is still above the water level so you see if the summer load on the port side is submerged, the water level is above the summer load line that's why the vessel is sink or listed to port side all right so this time because one is above and the other one is below you can calculate the mean distance of the summer load line from the water level by subtracting the two values and dividing by two if they were both above the water you would just add the two and divide by two because one is below and the other one is above you will subtract one from the other and of course because the one which is above the water load line is higher in value which is 200 millimeters you know that the net result of 60 millimeters will be above the water all right so if if uh, the values were reversed and you were 200 millimeters below the water level then the net result would have been 60 millimeters below water but because you know that it's 200 millimeters above water on one side which is higher than 80 millimeters of submersion so that means the net result the difference between the two dividing by two will be above water so therefore when the vessel is upright the summer load line will be 60 by 10 which is equal to 6 centimeters above the water level so here i am just converting the millimeters to centimeters and again because you're above the water level you can sink the vessel by six centimeters and that's why sinkage is required the tpc is given to you for one centimeter you need about 30 of the tpc that means 30 tons so to sink six centimeters you needed 180 tons six by 30 which is the tpc so 180 tons of this cargo can be loaded cargo fuel fresh water whatever can be loaded to sink the vessel by six centimeters bringing the load water level to the summer load line Finally, the last example, this is question number four, says that the vessel is this time floating in dock water, not sea water, but dock water relative density 1.016. And this time it's not her summer load line, but her winter load line. That's 100 millimeters below the water on the port side and 180 millimeters below water on the starboard side. All right. If her fresh water allowance is 200 millimeters, TPC is 24 and summer load line is uh, draft is 9.6 meters you have to find the dead weight available all right so remember this question is slightly different and that's why I've taken this example in this example uh, there is dock water and not sea water and it's the winter load line that's submerged below water level in both the cases the fresh water allowance is given to you the TPC is given to you and the summer load line draft is given to you. So when the vessel is submerged up to the summer load line, the draft of the vessel is 9.6 meters and you have to find the dead weight available. So don't worry, it's pretty much the same principle again like I told you before. Just break, whenever I see a question like this, don't get overwhelmed by whatever is written here. Just break it down and make sure that you understand meaning of each and every word. If you understand the meaning of each and every word and you can interpret it either in drawing or in theory or through formulas or through understanding, you can solve the question so again in this case the port winter load line is 100 millimeters below water the starboard winter load line is 180 below water level so what would that look like let me go above and show it to you all right so port winter load line 100 millimeters and starboard load line 180 millimeters below so i will go back to the load line diagram i will delete the old load lines that i drew here i mean i know that you have understood by now but still i just want to show it to you so in the port side it's 100 millimeters below water level so that means water has gone above the winter load line so this distance here is 100 millimeters and the other one the starboard side the, again it is submerged so that means it's 180 millimeters so both the cases the water load line is submerged it's not up so winter load line is submerged so it's not above 
and one thing I'll show you here itself uh, before I go so for, further the distance between winter and summer and I've told you this before and tropical and summer is the same it's about 148th of the summer draft of summer draft all right this is the normally the in both the cases of course all right the distance between that's the marking so let's go back to the question so because the, both the load lines are now below the water level the mean distance of the winter load line from the water will be 180 plus 100 divided by 2 so if one was if both are below and both are above you will add the two and divide by two if one is above and the other one is below you will subtract the two and divide by two and depending on which one is the higher value it will be below or above water all right that's why i've taken few different examples here to explain the concept to you so in this case it's 140 millimeters below water level that's the mean distance so when the ship is upright the winter load line will be 140 millimeter divided by 10 that is 14 centimeters below water level all right now i've told you before distance from the winter load line to the summer load line is measured as 148 by summer draft the summer draft is 9.6 meters given to you in the question it's given in the question itself so distance from the winter load line to summer load line is about 20 centimeters all right therefore distance from the present water line to summer load line will be 20 minus 14 which is equal to 6 centimeters so if you didn't get it let me show it to you so now i said winter load line is submerged 14 centimeters below water level right so if i take an example this is tropical fresh this is fresh and let me show this to you here right this is summer and this is winter now i have used the blue pen so i have to use the red pen here to show the water level sorry so if i say that my winter load line was 14 centimeters below water that means if this is the water level right it's 14 centimeters below but the distance from winter load line to summer load line is 20 centimeters that i have calculated here all right so that means this is about 20 centimeters right so therefore distance from present water line which is the red line to the summer load line will be 20 minus 14 equal to 6 centimeters right so this distance here becomes 6 centimeters get it 20 minus 14 you can see it in the diagram itself right so we have 6 centimeters therefore the dock water allowance which is a change of the draft remember as we go from relative density one relative density to sea water will be change of density or dock water to sea water divided by 0 0.025 multiplied by fresh water allowance so the change in draft if i put in the values here we are going from 1.025 to 1.016 will be about 7.2 centimeters all right so that 7.2 centimeters is the allowance to we know that the vessel will rise by 7.2 centimeters as the draft is decreasing sorry as the density is decreasing the vessel will rise right it will change so we are going from uh, sorry we are going from 1.016 to uh, fresh seawater right so as the draft will increase uh, density will increase draft will decrease that means draft will decrease means the vessel will rise so the vessel will rise by 7.2 centimeters so as the vessel is going from 1.016 where it currently is it's going to 1.025 density is increasing so draft will decrease right if the draft decreases that means the vessel will rise so vessel will rise so vessel will rise by 7.2 centimeters but you already have six centimeters allowance with you over here this is six centimeters so that means you can load the ship at this stage you can load the ship six centimeters more to bring the ship towards summer load line in sea water but if the vessel is going to rise by 7.2 centimeters further that means the total sinkage that you have available is six plus 7.2 that is 13.2 centimeters 
So you can sink the ship by 13.2 centimeters because by the time the vessel moves from a relative density of 1.016 to 1.025, the vessel would have risen. The draft would have decreased. The vessel would have risen by another 7.2. So adding the two, you get 13.2 centimeters. The TPC is given to you is area by 100 multiplied by density of water displaced. So TPC is given to you area by 100 TPC equals area by 100 by 1.025 or area by 100 is equal to bring it here 24 by 1.025 therefore in dock water the TPC will be equal to area by 100 by 1.016 which is the density of water this is the dock water density so if you have to calculate the TPC it will be 24 divided by 1.025 multiplied by 1.016 which is 23.79 tons per centimeter so that means to sink the vessel by one centimeter i need to load 23.79 tons so therefore the dead weight available the amount of cargo fuel fresh water that i can load to sink the vessel by 13.2 centimeters which i have in hand as allowance i will multiply it by the tpc of 23.79 tons which will give me a total value of 3.41 314 tons so i have the allowance to load 314 tons to sink the vessel by 13.2 centimeters in the dock water of 1.016 so that when the vessel goes from the dock water of 1.016 to 1.025 of sea water the vessel will be or the water level will be at the summer road line right so that was the whole meaning of the question all right so the tpc here in this case you didn't understand tpc equals 100 area by 100 multiply by density of water the seawater tpc is given to you so if the tpc is given to you in the question assume it's the seawater tpc unless the question specifies the tpc of 24 is given to you 24 will be equal to area by 100 by 1.025 this is seawater density so you get an idea of what the area by 100 value is by taking 1.025 on the other side so area by 100 equals 24.1.025 in dock water the tpc is not known to me so i am calculating my tpc here by multiplying area by 100 multiplied by the dock water density area by 100 is equal to i know from here is equal to 24 by 1.025 so i multiplied by the density so that's pretty much it so if there is something you didn't understand please write to me in the comments thank you everybody for following me for writing me writing to me and providing me with a lot of feedback and mostly all of it is positive and happy to receive negative as well uh, but uh, let me know if there's any point you didn't understand i try to solve these questions as uh, you would in the exam and that's why i don't use anything fancy or fancy animations here i just try to solve different examples of questions so that if you see, get these questions in the exam you can use the same concept for solving them all right so i hope this was useful to you uh, if you have any questions please write to me in the comment section and thank you very much and please keep subscribing to get notification of my future videos. Bye and I'll see you soon.